This is Brendan here at Common Motor Collective. That is common-motor.com on the internet. Today we are going to do a reassembly of Honda CB350 carburetor. Uh, we've done a disassembly so far. We've done some identification of these carburetors so far. Today we're going to put it all back together so you can get it ready to put on the bike. And uh, the 350 carburetor, well, we have two of the same exact carburetor. Well, they're left and right specific, so they're not 100% exact, but really they're they're pretty much the same. And so we're only gonna do a rebuild on a single carburetor because the same information applies to other carburetors because they're you know identical. So uh, let's just put this on the bench and start putting it together. So here is our cleaned carburetor body. We've had this soaking in the parts washer for a while and we've gone through and she scrubbed everything out, uh, run cleaner through all the little passages and holes as, long, as well as air. So our carburetor body itself is, is clean and ready to go back together. Uh, we also you know, clean out the float bowl and the slide and the float and all the other pieces that are going with the carburetor. So we'll come back to those in a minute. And then also I have all my pieces right here that are in my carburetor rebuild kit, and that's part number 6047. Make sure you select the correct kit for the style of carburetor you have. If you're not sure on the style of carburetor you have, watch our video on on the CB350 carburetor styles. And uh, I'll let you know which kit you need. This is a late model or late style carburetor because this bike is like a 72. So uh, let's just start putting it together. I'm gonna focus right here on the float bowl area first. Um, and I have the, uh, obviously I still have that, the slide taken out, and I like that because it keeps the carburetor nice and level for putting things together. Okay, so the very first things I'm going to put back into my carburetor are, uh, this is the, right here, this is the secondary jet emulsifier tube. Depending on your carburetor, you may have had to press this one out and uh, reuse it and clean it. Uh, in this case, I happen to have a new one, and that's going to go into right here in this, uh, this rear passageway. And it's a pressed in part, although, it's a little bit of oil here, just lightweight marble mystery oil. Uh, although it looks like it has a screwdriver slot in it. And a lot of people think that's a screwdriver slot. They put a screwdriver in there, in there and they break it off and disassemble it. It's actually a pressed together part. I'm just gonna drop them in like that. I just have a punch here and I'm just gonna press until I feel it seat. Just like that. This right here is it's kind of it's it's partner. This is the uh, the uh, main jet emulsifier tube. People call it the jet needle emulsifier tube. Um, this is actually the nozzle here on the end where the the gas sprays out. Same deal. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on it. Boop, boop. I like using oil when I put these things together. It goes in the large of the two holes here. The uh, the tapered end goes down first, and the big flat end is on the bottom. Just like that. Same thing, I'm just gonna take my punch and real lightly press it in until I feel it seat. Let's see if that's seated or not. Let me take a look here. Well, that's good. That one dropped right in really easy. So it doesn't take much. They all go right in. All right, so what's next? This other hole right here is where my idle jet goes or my pilot jet, which is this guy right here. Uh, in this car particular carburetor, it's number 35. And uh, same deal. Put a little drop of oil on the threads. Boop. It's like that. Drop them in the hole. A small flathead screwdriver. Thread it in until I feel it seat. That's it. Okay. The next piece that's going to go with all of this is this little. I mean, it's going to be hard to kind of see, I mean, I'll just put it here so you guys see it. It's like a little cork, it's a little rubber plug. And this is an often either a disintegrated piece or a missing piece on these 350 carburetors. So uh, that plug goes in the same exact hole here where I put the, the pilot jet. And it literally just, just presses in just like that. Yes, it's that easy. Okay, what is next? I guess next I'm going to put in my, uh, my float valve. Let's see. 
So this is my, my float seat here. Uh, we actually have you know the larger holes where the, the float needle goes and then it has an o-ring on it ready to go and this is the part that faces down. Anytime I have an o-ring part I always will again put a drop of oil on it help lubricate it make it easier to install. That guy just drops in right like that. Let's see if I can get that pressed in. So that went pretty easy. Not bad. Great. So what holds this guy in is this little clip. It's this kind of like two-prong fork guy right here. And uh, if you look at it very closely, you can notice that one side is kind of angled down or angled up. So if I were to put it on this way, we'd be putting pressure down. If I had to have it in this way, it'd be facing up. So again, uh, this arc I want pushing down on this seat right here. So I'm going to put it on just like that. And then there is a Phillips screw that holds that holds that in place. Same deal. A little bit of oil in my threads here. I'm dropping my Phillips screw. Believe it or not, we're about halfway done with the bomb saw the carburetor. It's going pretty quick. All right, now comes the part that's a little bit more tedious to do. This is my float needle. This is what stops the flow of gas and goes inside my float seat here. The pointed side goes down. The back side here has this little spring-loaded, so I can show you that better with this, little spring-loaded guy. That's what touches up against the float. I'm gonna drop it in, so I'm just gonna take it. Just drop it in like that. Easy. Next piece that goes on is my carburetor float, which goes right here. Uh, this one is the original float that came out of the carburetor. It's, uh, it was pretty clean. I washed it. Uh, however, these are very uh, failure prone and uh, they are, are prone to leaks. In fact, if you look very closely, you might be able to see a little bit of corrosion hitting here on the bottom of each of the floats where it touched the bottom of the bowl for years. Uh, the, the quick test for these is to, is to submerge them in some gasoline and then take them and shake them next to your ear. If you hear liquid inside either of these, that means uh, the floats are defective and they need to be changed. We do have floats available, replacements. Um, they're part number 6068. But right now we're just going to put it in and then we have to check the height because it does have a certain height it's supposed to be at. We have a pin hold it in place all that stuff just presses together nice and smooth <laughs> 